Hello everyone, this is Ether Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Heroes. So this is a uh, kind of a, it's it's not an insane defense, but it's deceptively strong, of course, because infantry pulse, but very few merges on the units overall. So it's definitely far from as spoopy as it could be, and of course, Fallen Julia is starting adjacent to her allies, which is kind of a problem when. Three of her skills want her to be not adjacent. So my current idea is we're going to meme and go in turn one because that's what we do. Uh, unfortunately, we can't get Mila where we want her. I think this is going to be fine, though, where she is right now. So the idea is we're going to smite up air. Uh, I believe we barely one shot. <laughs> we, we like overkill by like one or something. <laughs> Um, since again, Dark Scripture is not active. And so, main reasoning for that is this is an infantry pulse team, like I said. So, turn one, turn one Dragon Fang, turn one Lunar Flash, um, and turn one Iceberg. So, pretty spoopy. The main thing we just have to worry about here is our matchup against Legendary Alm. We can one-shot him trivially, it's just the hardy bearing part of it. We can't vantage him, and so we just have to make sure Nino can actually live him. So for simplicity, we're going to use the stats we see here. Um, we, we could go to... let's go to 42 defense, whatever, for the Kelks. So it's 10 from that. Um, We're just gonna approximate 20. Yeah, he, he definitely can't one-shot Nino. That's that's pretty expected for Legendary Ulm. Um, he has a pretty hard time one-shotting. One-round KOing is more of a specialty because of Luna Arc. Um, so with Mila's turn wheel, we can inflict isolation here. So after we take out Fallen Julia, the idea is we're going to move Nino here, dance Legendary Azura. Repo air. And so in this current state, Nino is in range to attack Alm because of gray waves. So this is going to force Lysithia to rally. And then we should get a dance from like Legendary Zera. And well, Lysithia can't reach us. So that's great. Um, and if something goes haywire, you know... We're, we're, we're doomed, <laughs> but uh, the main problem is Mill is going to have to smite here, so she's going to be ending her turn there, and uh, that poses some problems in terms of isolation for future turns, so we do have to be a bit concerned about that, but uh, I'll be back in a second while I think through to see if this is a bad play or not. Honestly, I think at this point, since we're fooling around, we might as well do it. Uh, we're doing t pretty terrible on defense, especially because of the uh, update. So our because our max, the maximum lift we can lose any match is now 60 instead of 40 because we're not, we don't have a Triandra, so that that's not for this week. So I think it's okay as the turn one play gets rid of Fallen Julia, who's honestly the largest threat. Lysithia is a threat, but I did do my daily damage calcs, and there's an alternate play we could do, except it doesn't quite work, where we can actually one-shot Lysithia. I believe we get exact lethal um, plus one or something. <laughs> Again, the lack of merges, uh, and well, this is the more, one of the more merge units, but definitely kicking in to this for this team. Uh, Bright Shrine, not too particularly concerned with that since generally all these units are relatively not too bulky. So let's go for it and get memed on pretty much. That's that's going to be the story of this. Now the question is, what do we do with Caden? That's that's the real question. Um, and again, we, can, we have to put Mila here so we can get the isolation. This will force some things. We'll see if it's good or bad. Worst case scenario, we lose a unit this turn, but uh, I think it'll be okay, yes. trademark. <laughs> I did compute that correctly, alright. 
And of course, Nino is buffed with defense tactic, and so she can get the plus six to all stats. So we'll go ahead and break this. There's no reason for us not to. And again, might as well bring Kaden over there. There's no reason not to. So there's the rally that we expected and the dance. So um, everything as expected. So now we just giga nuke to their team and it's GG. So we can actually attack here directly. Attack Alm here. And we should be winning here with Nino attacking into the net. And uh, it's a weaponless legendary Azura left. So it should be GG's from here unless, you know, young Azura murders air. Which uh, would be pretty sad, not gonna lie. But uh, we can just use Smite here to grab that faster. And we're gonna give Caden the kill since we're farming SP on him. But yeah, pretty straightforward. Uh, having Mila's turn wheel is definitely super strong on light offense. That's why a lot of people uh, kind of run her on offense. Because without that, um, the issue is we can't make that play because Nino would be in range for, for attacking. Uh, because then Annette could rally Legendary Alm. Wait, no, no, no. It still would have been fine. I was thinking about uh, Alm getting the extra movement and sniping off... Um, sniping off uh, air. But uh, I guess it... I guess the problem would be the double dance. That's the main thing. Um, there are two rallies, though, so maybe it would have been a bit awkward. I, I'm too lazy to compute, but... With that, we're doing all right. Handy dandy. Um, not all the way at the top because precisely because spoilers we're getting rolled on defense except for this recent match here <laughs> we're, we're just getting rolled because we're up so high that when people randomly match into us they have to be in tier 26 or tier 27 i believe that's how the matchmaker works um actually i was in tier 26 so between 25 and 27 and if you're at this point that point as of that time when they matched up that means you're decent enough or maybe you got lucky i don't know so for the most part the people up here are pretty competent and because we don't have triandra we can't go back to the normal before update 5.0 where our maximum lift loss per match was 40 you have to have a bonus mythic for that to for it to evaluate the same way but uh yep still doing all right though we are we've definitely clinched tier 27 so i'm happy about that that was my main concern uh that even though uh, with a plus 195 offense i can reach over 14,000 lift it's actually it would it's actually non-trivial to make tier 27 doing what I'm doing with this team because uh, once you can, for example, say you lose a double match, say oh, you me, say I lost the double match. That's an immediate minus 390 lift, <laughs> and then if I that's also a loss of 20 ether and so if I miss ether too much then I also lose match 16 so that's another 195 lift so all of a sudden you're, you're really coming close to not being in tier 27 and of course then defense matches have to occur <laughs> so yeah not great let's go ahead and watch this one together because I haven't watched it yet um, I imagine it's just they weren't ready for specials yeah it seems like it's a gale force but there's a fallen corn so maybe they try and tank pseudo synergy yeah they, they have their tank here wonder I, I'm guessing they made a mistake somewhere because this looks like a, a pretty good offense team if I say so myself. I think the main issue here is, of course, well, no surprise, Bramamond. Legendary Julia, I guess, is the sleeper troll <laughs> because she does things, but they probably did something like 
I don't know, baiting a fallen corn seems kind of sus because Legendary Julia just exists. That's, that's already a problem. And she has turn one iceberg, so it hurts. Um, there's no damage reduction. So, they have a nice bolt tower spot against my team, though. It doesn't help against the self matchup, though. So that's kind of a problem. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I can see where this went wrong. Uh, I'm not sure why they would go all in like that. There's no reason to do this. A better play straight up is some... Because Peony's Gentle Dream lets you teleport around the place as well. So you can do some decent hit and run antics. I uh, wouldn't necessarily go for Selif. Unironically, there's a, it's better to go for like Bramamon, for example, especially since attack defense solo isn't active in this spot. Precisely because um, Selif doesn't actually do that much damage and his speed's never really doubling reasonably unless it's like this Reinhardt that's debuffed. <laughs> Um, Selif's barely doubling him, so in general, Selif's actually just kind of an infantry pulse bot slash trolling people with vantage occasionally. So honestly, hit and run off of Bramamon's probably the play. A lot of people do bring Smiter reposition or something on offense, so typically that's what should happen, but because they don't have Mila on this team, both my dancers can wreak havoc. And Self actually picks up the kill. Actually kind of surprised. I know he's red and he's in vantage range with Brazen and his uh, Ignis up. But, uh, you know, damage reduction is a thing. That was pretty close. Nil's actually doing a good amount of damage. But yeah, Bramon's just going to clean up. And no matter what Peony does, she just... She can do damage to the Bramamons at least, but uh, Legendary Julia, a bit more on the difficult side. <laughs> so, that's a rip. Yep. So, yeah, that, that's just, they went all in like that, and uh, didn't quite pan out. I'm trying to think of what they probably could have done better. Likely just hit a smart hit and run, but you do have to be reasonably smart about it, especially if you don't have Mila to at least isolate one dancer. But anyways, enough rambling. That's going to be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. As always, this is Ether Dragon, and hope to see you all next time. Bye.